So hi, everybody. It's so nice to see you here. Let me just go ahead and share my screen. Um, we will do this and share. Sorry. I don't want to share the whole thing. Here we go. Uh oh. All right, there we go. Can y'all see this? Okay, perfect. Yes. So this is our first general meeting um, for IABC. And so essentially what we'll be talking about here is obviously the elevator pitch is why I think a lot of you came and also what IABC, IABC is and how you can get involved with the organization. So first, before we do any of that, we're gonna take a little picture. Um, so we're all just gonna smile and pose and we'll probably do like, I don't know, we'll hold it for like a couple seconds. So, oh, there's someone trying to come in. One request, um, everybody who has their cameras up, would you turn them on for a moment so we can see your wonderfulness? Okay, are we good? Sorry, I can't see everybody. All right. Just waiting on Adrian, who just logged in. Thank you, Adrian. All right, are we good? Cool. I have just posted link to this uh, this link in the chat. Okay. So, three, two, one, cheese. All right, so essentially IABC is a professional development, networking, communication sort of organization. Um, so here are several points that kind of encapsulate what we're trying to make IABC here at Tech. So the first one is to access career opportunities in the US as, and globally, because this is an international organization, you'll have the opportunity to connect with people all over the world, just not in Lubbock, Texas. <laughs> um, the second point is to gain real world international communications experience, then also networking with industry professionals, adding value to your resume, building Texas Tech's first student IABC, IABC chapter. In case you guys didn't know, this is the first chapter here on campus. So we're all kind of working through this together and building this up together. Um, and I think it's super awesome to be a part of the foundations of something rather than just kind of joining something after, you know, a couple of years or even like 50 years or something like that. And our last point is to connect or present at IABC conferences. This is an international group, if you don't get the point yet. So the conferences are all over the world. And I think that's a really cool um, opportunity. So we obviously have advisors. We have three lovely faculty advisors. Um, so the first one is Jennifer Magas. Hi there, hi there. I should just tell you really quickly, I'm an assistant professor of practice. I'm new to Texas Tech University. And a lot of you know, I teach PCOM 3373. In addition to other classes, such as the Social Media Influencers course in Italy. Coming up soon. And next we have the lovely Andrea Bowden. Hello, you probably know me by now. I, I am glad to see a few students here. I'm Andrea Bowden. I'm a lecturer in professional communication, teach business comm. This semester, I am teaching intro to professional communication principles of professional communication and data visualization for media and working with all these wonderful IABC books. And last but not least, Miss Elena. Hi, everyone. My name is Elena, and yeah, I'm a lecturer. <laughs> And I'm lecturer. Uh, I teach business communication and special topics in professional communication, professional communication abroad, for example. Uh, before I came to academia, I worked in global companies, so I will be more than happy to share my expertise with all of you. And this is great and very exciting opportunities to connect, as Nia said, globally and locally and 
increase your uh, job opportunities as well. All right, so you're probably also wondering who I am. So my name is Mia, I'm the president of the organization. And we also have a whole line of officers who uh, all work together to you know, make this happen. So I'll just go down and people can introduce themselves. So first, the VP of Planning and Programming is Malia Samuel. Hello. And then VP of Membership is Catherine Ellis. Hi. <laughs> We have the VP of Branding and Engagement, Hayden Andres. Hello. <clears throat> the Secretary, Ms. Lauren Hamilton. Hi. And our Treasurer, Giovanni, is actually having a baby right now. So he is not able to um, make the meeting, but you know, he's our, he's our Treasurer. So now we're gonna go into our elevator pitch section. Um, and so, yeah, let's just go ahead and get right into it. So essentially, um, we're gonna be going over what an elevator pitch is, some key components of it, an example, and then we'll have space to collaborate. So what is an elevator speech? Um, uh, go ahead, sorry. Okay, do you want me to do this one or do you wanna do it? Go ahead. Okay. So pretty much a uh, elevator speech is just a brief way of introducing yourself. And in the like brief 30 seconds that you're doing that, you wanna get across a couple key points about yourself that you want the other person to know. And it's also a good chance to make a connection with someone. And if anybody went to the business career fair today, I'm sure y'all had to do a lot of those. I know I did, so. Um, sorry. So essentially, yeah, like Malaya said, the purpose of this is just to quickly summarize who you are, especially when you're talking to someone who may be able to get you a job in the future or give you um, direction and guidance. Um, so it's a good way to network with people. You essentially just summarize your resume into like a quick little blurb. It's your own little branding type of tool, and it's a really good conversation starter. All right, I guess I'll go. So pretty much the contents of an elevator speech, you wanna identify your goal and you also wanna target your audience. So let's say if you're using this to talk to a specific business, you wanna make sure that you're addressing it to them. Or for example, whenever I was at the career fair today, I was just saying, hi, my name's Malia. I'm a marketing major. I really don't know exactly what I wanna do, but I'm here to just learn. And that's a good way because I know obviously a lot of us probably don't know exactly what we want to do just yet. We are in college, but um, we also want to create a hook. So like I said, I'm here to learn about what your company has to offer. That's a pretty good hook because now they're going to tell you more about them and try to, that kind of puts your foot in the door. Um, you want to explain how you can contribute and add value. So like just if you've had any accomplishments or achievements in school or you've done any internships or anything, you just want to kind of use that as an example to show that you're capable of doing what, what they want and you can definitely help their company. And you also want to end it with a call to action. So, for example, you'd be like, well, if you'd love to talk further, I would love to give you my resume and we can maybe set up a schedule or an interview. So. So um, this is pretty much how you're gonna set up your elevator speech. So first, obviously introduce yourself, um, say your name, maybe if like your classification, your major, that sort of thing. Um, and then something that gives you value, like what problem do you solve? What do you bring to the table? How do you do this? And then obviously what comes out of that? Um, so that's kind of like how you can break it down so it doesn't seem so intimidating when you're creating your elevator speech. And then this is a really good template for the speech. So, um, you know, you can just kind of put in your, 
I'm just lost the words. You can put in your own information in these little blanks and then you can build a pretty decent elevator speech this way. So now we will take some time to collaborate and I think we're gonna do some breakout rooms. So I might need some help with that. Okay. Um, how many people are we having doing the elevator speeches? Do you know, or elevator so, pitches? We have 23 people in here. So I guess we can do like an officer per breakout room and then divide the rest up equally. Okay. Um, I can create six breakout rooms and we can assign them manually. How does that sound? Okay. Okay, so group one, we'll do one, two, three, and oh, I didn't know Camelia's. And let's add Hayden to that group. In this group, we'll do Monka, Brady, Camille. Sorry about this, folks. I'm just trying to do some setup. Let's see. In this group, we're going to do Coleman. Mm -hmm. And we'll put Lauren. Right. In this group, we're going to do mm -hmm. And we'll put Malaya. And in this group, we're going to put Kristen, Myra. Nia, yeah, can you go back to the slide while we're just waiting, just so people can take a screenshot of it if we can't see it when we're in the breakout room? Do we want to use the template? Can I just see the other slide too, the, the one previous? How much time are we going to have in each breakout room? What do you guys think? Um, we have until 640. Till 640? Okay. I would take a screenshot with your phone of each one just to help you. Unless, Andrea, is there a way we could drop it in each breakout room? Well, we do have the, you can download the files, but um, yeah, we can probably do a screenshot or something. We could do that. Okay. That way it'll help when we're in the breakout rooms. Okay. So I'm opening the rooms now. Okay. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. So how did it, so can we hear your elevator pitches? Avery's looking, oh my, look. oh my gosh, it's so cute. Yes, it's okay, it's first so of, beautiful. <laughs> so those of you who are done, I guess I'm going to ask, would you be willing to give your elevator pitches to us? Blanca's looking at me like, no. I'm going to to see her. Good to see. I can. It, it, had, it was a little off the cuff, but <laughs> go for it. Oh, right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, Practice makes perfect. Yeah, it sure does. Um, all right. My name is Blanca Bai. I am professionally a digital project manager for a design company. Um, I ensure that our clients' creations come to life uh, it, and make sure that they're all buttoned up and, and they match the, the ass that they want and that they get them in time. Um, I focus on, my focus is websites. Uh, so we do all the research that goes into that and make sure that, um, you know, everything from design to what impacts the analytics uh, solve the client's problems and helps meet their business goals. So that was Not a really good for... elevator speech. Mm -hmm. like I have to say, my my business, I own a PR agency and we just moved to Lubbock and we have to redo our website. So I'd love to hook up with you and ask you some questions because we need to do it this summer. So. Yeah, for sure. I, I work for uh, an amazing, an amazing design agency. Um, our clients are predominantly very high level cybersecurity, but we also uh, have our foot in the door with other um, high visual areas. Ooh. She's still you pitching. Isn't that great? <laughs> I would never know if you hadn't said your elevator speech, see? How about Avery? 
she's like, um, don't do this to me. <laughs> sure, I, I can go, no worries. Um, my name is Avery. I'm a junior digital media and professional communications major here at Texas Tech. While I am a student, I'm also working full time as a legal contracts coordinator here in Houston, Texas. All of this is so I can continue diversifying my background because I'm working on going to law school. So I want to add more um, to my resume and to my application to make me a more well-rounded student. So I'll have more to offer to the community once I finish law school and eventually hopefully start working as an attorney. Did you see Jennifer's eyes light up on that one? <laughs> She refers to herself as a recovering attorney. Yes, so my background is employment law. If you need help with your application or any of your essays, let me know. I can tell you what law schools are looking for. I was very fortunate when I went to law school. They covered a lot of my tuition. Very, very hard to get to it, you know, just any type of scholarships for law school. And I was very fortunate, so I'm happy to help. No, I am absolutely going to take you up on that. I feel like it's such a specialized, small, like niche community that I'm having such a hard time figuring out the best way to work on my application. Luckily, I work for three attorneys who are helping me, but I'm absolutely always looking to get more advice. That's great. Definitely take their advice. I just had another former student who just applied to law school, so I can even ask her if she can share her. We worked on her essay together. So I'm happy to share that as well. When okay, she did, she did a lot of good law schools. So I'll tell you all about that. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Now it's Adrian's turn. Do you like the way I, I'm still teaching the class? I can't help it. All right. Um, uh, mine's still kind of a work in progress, but we'll see if I could get it down. Um. My name is Adrian Gomez. I am a marketing major here at Texas Tech. Uh, I plan to be getting an online master's degree uh, after I graduate in statistics. If you're looking for somebody who is constantly learning new skills, I'm always getting new certificates in different areas to widen my skill set. Uh, if you have any more questions, I would love to answer. Good start. Yeah, I like that you brought in if you are looking for. So you brought in like the hook. Camille's nodding. Yeah. I know Camille has a lot of sales in in good marketing kind of ways. So let's go. She's like, no pressure. <laughs> well, Ready? I did my best to be here. I got off of work at six. I was like, I can't drive with Zoom on, but I'll get on when I can. You're amazing. However, my name is Camille Shu. I work for a bridal boutique here in Dallas, Texas as their digital marketing manager. I'm passionate about inspiring others, encouraging creative freedom. That is all what we are about, kind of finding that perfect dress for every gal. I help brands to build their social media presence through digital ad campaigns, styling books, a whole plethora of things. But I understand how each digital marketing campaign contributes to a company's overall goal. Um, I've worked with print ads, email marketing, um, efficient in constant contact, HubSpot, Google Analytics, excuse me, and I am currently going to be a DMPC major with a minor in advertising. Y'all are just like way too impressive. I think when I was in college, I was like, I'm an English major. I want to English. Yeah, that was about it. All right, I'm going to start, I'm going to set the thing to close down the, uh, da, 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 da. where is the breakout rooms? Okay. Okay. I'm just going to, I don't want to broadcast. and closing all ribs. So slowly they will come back. And now I'm gonna mute again. Back.
Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back. All right, I think we're all coming back now. Oh my gosh, Catherine's dog. <laughs> He thinks she's a lab dog. It's Coco. <laughs> For those of y'all who don't know, me and Catherine are roommates. So no. Coco loves her and she stands outside her door. Yeah, literally last night she was sitting outside of my door and I was like, hey, Coco. <laughs> I love that. She like won't sit down either, so I'm just holding her. <laughs> I think she thinks she's a cat. <laughs> does. Yeah. And I still jump up too and I'm like, get off of me. Down. Oh, how could you cat. not love her though look at that face <laughs> she's so sweet Coco. so is that everything or is that everyone back i'm good to start everyone's saying. returned back okay cool okay nia has a little problem with the wi-fi and so i am trying to pull up the information uh, that where did I do with this? There we go. So now it's my turn to screen share for now. Uh, let me see. And oh, pardon me. Awkward moment. We planned for this. We knew it was going to happen. We said these windstorms were going to cause problems. I just need to get stuff better. And okay, there we go. So you, we've talked about all of this, and we have the elevator speech through. And I'm gonna just can you uh, hoping you can see as bad as my screen looks right now. Um, Malaya, do you want to start talking about, whoa, well, that got big fast. Um, do you want to start talking about planning and programming, please? Sure. So I'm the vice president of planning and programming. So pretty much that means that I plan all the events and anything that we do. So like I planned the elevator pitch for today. And currently I'm thinking about trying to get a guest speaker for our March meeting. So y'all should definitely hit us up. I think it's March 29th, same time, six to seven. I don't know who we're gonna have yet, but working on it. Um, so let me read this slide real quick. We'll also be trying to like coordinate with other organizations and just like fundraising and just getting ourselves out there, so especially, it's kind of hard now, especially since we're just like a brand new organization and we still, have to do all our bylaws and make sure we're in actually an organization so probably a lot of the events and stuff will be like a next semester summer type thing not really now right now we're just trying to get the basics down mm, we work with branding and engagement that's like our social media that's Hayden because you know if we're planning everything they need to know what to advertise and how to get it out there and we do a lot of that we also work with membership because I mean we have to know who's coming so we can do things and we can get the right amount of stuff for whatever we're doing and that's pretty much it Hi, I'm Hayden. Um, I am the VP of branding of engagement. So I kind of do social media and kind of keep people engaged on there. And um, yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Tell us how you want people to join and get involved in the committee. Oh yeah, I could use some help. So if someone wants to help out, please help join the committee. Hayden's been doing a lot. She's been doing social media, but she's also helping with not just creating things on Canva, but writing copy for the social media posts and also 
even you know putting together content for our flyers we need to do that as well so there's a lot that goes into promoting our organization and she's been busy i keep her busy so we could use some help if you're interested yeah. in doing that if you like canva you don't have to use canva we're open to adobe as well if you use that um so it's really up to you but again copywriting and design that's what we're looking for Hi everyone, I'm Catherine. Um, I'm the VP of membership and basically um, I do all the like, you know, recruitment and helping people become official members. We do have a Microsoft form that I can share in the chat in a second. Um, and if you guys want to become official members of IABC, y'all can just fill that out and that'll give us like your email and stuff so that we can tell y'all when the next meetings are and things like that. Um, so yeah, I pretty much um, just have been doing that. So yeah. And you'd like help with recruitment because you want people to come to classes and talk us up and all that good stuff, right? Yes. And I'm yeah. also currently, like a lot of the times that I need people to go talk to classes are times that I have my own classes and I have to go to. So because I'm in one class specifically that's like very difficult and it is a research class so that's fun so yeah okay sorry i can talk about the governance so essentially for governance it's just making sure that we're in check and code and compliance and all of the above and creating the bylaws and constitution for the organization. Um, so whenever we are doing all of our governance stuff, the things that we end up um, sending to Texas Tech to say, OK, this is our organization. Here's what we're about, yada, yada, yada. We have to stay within those parameters. So it's really important whenever we're developing these sorts of um, documents to make sure that we're really um, encapsulating IABC's vision and all the different facets and perspectives that we want to tap into so that we don't have to be restricted when it comes to events and things like that. Um, along with developing that, obviously you have to research the bylaws and um, look at maybe some other student orgs or text rules to see you know, what exactly we need. And additionally, in the long run, governance will help strategize, okay, what do we want this organization to be like and function as in the future? And that's with me and with Lauren, our secretary and all that good stuff, like the behind the scenes type of work and the nitty gritty. So we could definitely use help because obviously that's a major component of this. <laughs> Okay, I will post link to sign up for committees in chat, right? I want to hear an awesome sales pitch from some, from <laughs> some of the leadership about why they should, everyone should join a committee, like your 30 second elevator pitch for your committee. No pressure. I'll go. Y'all should definitely join the committees because each of us have our own committee and we're only one person and it's a big organization, especially for Texas Tech, which is kind of a big college. So it's a lot of things <laughs> to do. And like I said, we're a new group. So we're really just trying to get ourselves out there. So if being a pioneer of a new like college <laughs> organization sounds cool to you, you should definitely join a committee and you can put it on your resume. People mm -hmm. love that whenever they see that you're like a part of a school organization, they love that. So why not? Well, so quick done. question. I see two links right now in chat for committee sign up. Are this the same? Wait, is it fine? Um, I think the first link is for committee sign up. That's the one you shared, Alina. Yes. Catherine is doing a membership drive at the same oh, time. Okay. Okay. Now, well, Catherine, you don't know that if students in PCOM 1100 are required to join as student members. So you already have a few people in this Zoom that are 
or at least we're supposed to sign up for IAVC. Uh, at, at, and we can talk about that later. You can follow up and, and stalk them later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can um, elevator pitch governance real quick. Um, so my name is Lauren, I'm the secretary and me and Mia are uh, working on governance. We need help. And this is one of the best things to put on your resume is to say that you worked with risk management, constitution bylaws and these kind of things. Because if you are working for any kind of major corporation and you wanna do something cool and you wanna work for a PAC, or anything that you're a publicly traded company and it, and you have something on your resume that says like, oh, I have worked in creating bylaws and um, abiding by them. This is the this is the right one for you. If you are any kind of interest in law school or anything to do with law in the legal field, this is the section for you. Lauren, were you in the group with Avery? Um, I don't know. No. Okay. I didn't know if you were doing that just as a like me. <laughs> and this is not really like a pitch. Well, I guess Loki it is, but I like the fact that it's so new and we can really have the complete um authority and jurisdiction to mold it into what we want it to be. So um, I think it's a great opportunity to kind of like cornerly make your mark <laughs> and, and have leadership in something and something to put on your resume like Malaya was talking about and all those sorts of things. Even um, I was talking to Kirsten about how, especially for like DMPC people, having a portfolio is really important. So let's say you wanna be a part of like the branding and engagement. Um, you can use some of the things that you've made with IABC to put in your portfolio and then you know go ahead and apply to an internship or a job. And that would also help you in the future. Um, so just things like that, like considering what it could look like in the future for you, I feel like is really important um, because that's kind of what we're all about is um, giving you the steps now to make the transition into the professional world a lot easier and seamless. So, are, is that pretty much it, I think? I stopped Does sharing, but you have any questions? I have a question. Will this be offered for online students as well? Will we always have a online platform? Mm -hmm. Thank you very we'll much. always have both in person and Zoom. Thank you. Any other questions? If if we're in the meet, uh, committees, what do we really do in it? Do we help like any way? And just wanted to know what we would be able to do. Um, so I'll talk about the planning one. So pretty much, if you're on my committee, you'll be helping me. So. Like I said, I'm thinking about getting a guest speaker for our next meeting next month. So y'all would probably help me be like, oh, well, who do you want to talk to? We can talk about, we can, let's say we want to bring in like a professor from like the business college to talk about something, or we can even find like, I don't know. I know the other day, one of my classes, we had a guest speaker. He was the president of First Financial Bank. So if we want to go big and just like find somebody, really y'all are just going to be helping me planning anything or like if we want to work with the organization we're like oh well maybe we should do like a little bake sale or maybe we should do I don't know just really anything you're just here to like collaborate and brainstorm okay and another thing I'll say about the committees is um it's kind of kind of the way to get the inside scoop I've always liked being a part of the inside, like in any organization I'm in, I like to know what's going on through and through. Um, so I feel like it's just a good way to keep up with the things that are going on and even get like, I don't know, some, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you can get closer to some of the people in the organization and the advisors and things like that. And they may be able to um, 
point you in a good direction like oh hey I saw that one of my colleagues from I don't know xy group that I used to work for is hiring for this intern or this position I thought that you might want to apply for this and maybe this is something that you've never even seen or heard of things like that you know I think that networking and communications is like the biggest thing and that's really intimidating so I love being a part of things like this where I'm like an insider and oh yeah oh I know who you're talking about oh I know them or I work for whoever you know what I'm trying to say so something like that <laughs> um so does anyone have any other questions I do uh, oh. go ahead Jake <laughs> okay um Hayden wh which committee were you talking about I couldn't remember but I was interested in what you were talking about branding and engagement okay got it And I think just to, to tag onto the back of Jake's uh, question. So for branding engagement, if we were to um, be a part of that committee, what is the workload expectation usually? Is that, has that been figured out yet? Just, just curious. Um, I only feel stressed out a little bit, but probably because it's just me. So if there's multiple people, it probably won't be that much. Okay, I just didn't know if you guys had already figured out, like, I know you mentioned, like, posting for social media, so, like, is there a schedule for that? What are the expectations, you know, for the week of, you know, for that, or like, what are the other avenues? Just because, I, and I think we touched on this earlier, but some of us are navigating work and school, and you can probably hear my kid in the background, so just curious, because it's interesting, but I, like, for me personally, I would really be interested in, in, being a part of that but i need to know what the workload expectations would be because i also wouldn't want to leave you guys like high and dry i can think i can speak to that since i'm kind of handling working with uh hayden on that right now and i think when we know if there's an event coming up we can plan it ahead of time and then the same thing once malaya and her committee determines who the speaker is as soon as we have that information we can start working on it i think where hayden was feeling stressed is at the last minute, we had to pivot online because of the wind, and we were both rushing together to get a to get the post. And then all of us were, you know, respond, you know, responding to emails and sending out emails. So that's where it becomes a little dicey, and and that's where if you're working, then someone else on the committee will probably pick that up if that makes sense. So the good thing is that we'll have time to plan, but sometimes we just have a shorter time constraint. Hopefully, we have a couple of days to work on something. But the nice thing is, is you can put usually put something together fairly quickly on Canva, which is a good thing. So how does that does that make a little more sense? Yeah, yeah, totally. And I'm sure like because I know you guys mentioned that this is kind of the first this is the first official like put together. So you, I'm sure as time goes by, there'd be like structure as far as like, you know, having templates and stuff, because I know that. really. And, and that's what we're looking to do. So then that way, two weeks before an event, we have things ready to go, or we have the information to put um, to put together the flyer and the social media posts. But that's going to take a little time to kind of get those procedures in place. Yeah, for sure. Cool. That answers my question. Thank you. I just wanted to pop in with one thing. And uh, even though Jennifer and Hayden have been doing a great job together, collaborating with social media and all of that, we also have a SharePoint site that we need to be building up again and maintaining. So there could be just a less prioritized thing, but it's something we haven't been able to do just because there's not enough, not enough labor to do that. Mm -hmm. And something like that could just be an hour a week if somebody said, hey, you know what? I'll take care of SharePoint and I'll make sure everything's updated and I'll make sure uh, we have some new content up and I'm sharing stuff. That would be amazing. Half hour a week, 15 minutes, something. So. Yeah, I'm just very quickly, I would like to add that it's difficult sometimes to coordinate the schedules, but there's also opportunity for Zoom meetings as well. So, and I know that uh, members use this opportunity so it can be flexible too. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? No? Okay, cool. So our next meeting is going to be March 29th. Um, 
If you're in person, it'll be in room 154, just like how this one was supposed to be. But obviously, if you're online, then it'll be online and we'll post the link when it gets closer to that time period. Um, we also have another meeting on April 26, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And um, if you guys want to share any feedback for this meeting, there's a link um, that was just posted in chat. I really appreciate if you just click or fill it out real quick. It doesn't take but like, I don't know, five seconds or so. But if there's no more questions, then thank you guys so much for coming and I hope to see you again. Bye. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you all so much for showing up. It was great Thanks. to see you. Thank Have you. It was great to see you. Bye. Have a good night all.